Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Chama. I'm a content creator based in Ontario, Canada. Guys, you're welcome. If you're watching this video from, from YouTube, um, please subscribe, like, and share. If you're watching on Facebook, do well to follow me, okay? For more content. Welcome back, right? If you see me holding this book any day, anytime, henceforth, like, you know I mean business. When you see me holding this book, just get your paper and pen. Be ready to jot things down, okay? So in today's video, if I'm looking down, I'm looking at my book so I don't forget anything. These are the documents required for student visa. You want to apply as a student from anywhere around the world. These are some of the documents documents that you will be needing. So if if you want to apply yourself, fine. But if an agent is helping you, you also need all this information. So when this agent is saying something contrary to what you know, you will question this agent. I know this agent. Are you sure you're not scamming me? A lot of scammers now. A lot of scammers right now. Like, they are on the loose because they know people want to migrate to Canada because they know Canada is hot cake now. Everybody wants to migrate to Canada. So... They are scamming people. A lot of people have cried on my DM, on my Instagram, on my YouTube, on my email. Like, I hear them every day. Please, this scam, this um, agent told me this. I was like, why would the agent tell you that? This is scam. This is scam, you know? So, please, don't fall prey to these scammers. Don't carry your hard-earned money, hard-earned sweat, and just go give to these people to live their best life. Okay? Information is power. Don't be ignorant watch videos even if you're giving an agent to do all these things for you visiting visa study visa but watch videos so that when they say some certain things you will know that this agent is not real you get my point okay i'm going to be listing there are a lot of them i'm going to be listing first of all you have to get international passport you can't tell me you're coming you're going to a country and you don't even have an international passport that is the first step first step is have your international passport handy Okay, but two is letter of acceptance. Letter of acceptance is what you get when um, you've applied for a school and um, you're given this letter of acceptance. Letter of acceptance is actually different from letter of admission or, or admission letter. It's two different things, okay? So don't miss them. Letter of acceptance is what you get after maybe probably you might have made deposit in the school and, you know, they have accepted you. They'll give you a letter. So you need that letter of acceptance. So the next one on my list is um, proof of fund. So um, are you sponsoring yourself? You need to provide a statement of account or proof of fund. You know, if you're not sponsoring yourself and if you are um, being sponsored by your uncle, your auntie, your friend, your neighbor, your siblings, whoever that is sponsoring you, the person needs to provide is or our proof of fund and also need to show that he or she has been banking with that particular bank for over a year. It's not just a bank you just open just for this purpose. No, it will show that you've been banking with that particular bank for over a year. And that person should also avoid, or you or that person should also avoid lump sum of money in your account. If you have lump sum of money in your account, it's a red flag for R I I R C C. Okay, it's just a red flag for them because when they see that, they will think you borrowed money just put, put there for the purpose of um statement of account proof yeah proof of account right so if you're going to be putting a lump sum of money in your account make sure you have evidence to back it up because they will ask you why is this lump sum in your account so you can provide maybe you sold the house you saw the land you saw this something huge that made that kind of money that made you have that kind of money in your account in a lump sum you understand me so, but if you cannot prove it, I will advise you to start up now, start building or your friend or your neighbor, whoever that will be sponsoring you, start up now, start building your proof of fund, put then, you know, put one million to this month, put three million the next month. Let that be inflow, you know, let them see activity going on in your account. Do you know this account is not just for the purpose of proof of fund. Do you know this account is very, very active. Something is coming in, something is going out on the dailies, something are coming in, something is going out, you know. Yeah. So and you need to have um more than ten thousand dollars. In I don't know how much it is in Naira. Please do the calculation. You know, Naira Naira goes up and down these days. So um do your calculation, know the rate of dollars. Right now, so you, but you have more than ten thousand. This ten thousand is just what you have in your account. You have not even talked about the tuition fees and all that. So you need to have more than 
$10,000. If you want to know the threshold, you can go on IRCC website and Google it and know how much you have in your account approval fund for student visas. Okay. So the next one is reference letter. You need a reference letter from the bank. It's just you going to the bank and telling them that you need a reference letter from them. They will, they will give you a paper. You will write to the manager, to the bank manager, that you need a reference letter stating that this, this, this. You've been banking with them for this number of years. That there's never been any issue in your banking. That, you know, that's a very good thing about your banking system with them, okay? You send it to the manager. A manager will, will draft this letter and send it to you, okay? So the next one on my list is passport photograph. Passport photograph is very, very important. Okay, you need to, there is a standard for every passport photograph in Canada. I will advise you to meet a professional photographer who has sense and know what he's doing. <laughs> meet a professional photographer who knows what he's doing. You will know the standard. You will know the Canadian standard. If you don't know the Canadian standard, please Google. Google or Google. I'm just here to give you a few information, okay? Do your research, okay? I am not, um, this is even what I should say in the beginning of this video, that I'm not a consultant, I'm not an immigration officer, I'm not an um, agent or whatever. I'm just here to give you guys tips so that you guys will not fall prey to scammers and all that um, or make mistakes, right? So, and this was, this was what I should have said from the beginning of this video. But anyways, passport photograph is so important, okay? Make sure you have this Canadian standard of study passport photograph thing, you know? Go to the a professional um, photographer, tell them what you want, and it's going to be a white but Whatever you're doing, go with white background, okay? And it's like from the shoulder up or something. I don't know, okay? Just make your research, Google it, but make sure you don't just send a random photograph. No, it has, to, it has a standard, so you follow the standard. So the next one you'll be needing is police clearance. Police clearance is... Um, you know, go to any of your local police stations, tell them that you need police clearance. Like it's done in Lagos, but when you go to a local police station, they will now take it to Lagos and send it back to you or something within the space of depending on the money. You know, Nigeria money moves when you bring plenty of money, everything will do sharp, sharp. If you don't bring money, it is slow, slow. So, depending on how you want it, how fast you want it, but when you go to any local police station, but if you're in Lagos already. They have a branch in Lagos and go to Lagos and do it. But if you're in anywhere around the, the state, not in Lagos, you can actually do it to your local police station and they'll send it to Lagos. It's just basically telling you that you don't have any criminal record, that your records are clean, you've not been executed of any crime, you're not an ex convict, and all of those stuff and all that and all that. So the next thing we're needing is IL, IELTS. Well, IELTS is not like compulsory, compulsory for people. Now, Nigeria is a speaking, speaking, um, English speaking country. So most time, the most school these days do not, do not like, um, do not require, um, IELTS because Nigeria is an English speaking country, right? So some schools that require that, that means you need to have an IELTS, but if the school does not require, which most schools this is, do not require, it's not like it's compulsory, it's not compulsory. So another one is the statement of purpose. This is the real one, like this is the real deal. Statement of purpose. You will state, the statement of purpose should, should be about two pages or something. You are really going to state something convincing to um, the immigration officer that will be, be handling your file that you are going just for the purpose of studying and coming back. If you don't know how to write purpose and um, statement of purpose, please Google it. How to write a statement of purpose for student visa. Don't be ignorant. Watch video. Don't just use your head and just write anything. Watch videos on how to write. They have a template for it also. Okay, you can check online. You see student template, then template visa for statement of purpose. It's usually one page, depending on what you want to write. But make sure everything you see sounds really 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 convincing so my daughter was crying so i need to attend to her so but i'm, I'm gonna have to finish this video because i'm trying to round up so make sure your st your statement of purpose is very solid when i mean solid very very cajat very solid make it very convincing to um the immigration officer that oh you're going there just to study and after study you'll come back and that's on period you're not going there to leave you're not going there to stay and you have things to do and things to attend to in your country right just to make it convincing next one is letter of recommendation this is a letter you get from your boss you know just to add to it it's not like it's compulsory if you didn't have any job before you 
start applying. It's okay. That is not like a mandatory something. It's just to boost up your or all, all your information and to make it convincing, right? So, but if you have a former job, you need a letter of recommendation from your boss, from your ogre, uh -huh, stating that um, you're very nice. Um, you have a, you have like a positive impact. The company, this that this is your role in a company where you work. Blah blah blah. You are punctual. You are this. You are that. You are honest. You are good. You are kind. You are this and that. Just state basically what you do for the company. Okay. Next one is your certificate or your transcript. This one should even come after the passport. This one should be my number two. Okay. So this is your certificate or your transcript. So I will advise you when you know you want to apply for this because sometimes this transcript takes a longer time. So that doesn't just hold you down. Okay. And um. Your transcript is very, very important. Start soon with the transcript thing. Start like start as early as possible when you know you want to apply. Just first thing before you even get your passports. Passport dimension for number one. Make sure you start getting making preparations for your transcript. It's very, 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 very important. But sometimes it takes time. So just start early, right? Start early. Okay. So if you know you don't you didn't go to university O level, prepare your NECO and YX certificate. I know. Next one on my list is medical report. Medical report is another thing that you need to do like upfront, like do it upfront, upfront at the beginning of your video. Okay. At the beginning of this video, I should have mentioned it too. Do it upfront. That is medicals. Okay. Make sure your medical is intact. If you've done your medical long ago, all you need is an e-medical. And the way you can get that e, you have to get an e-medical. Is by going to any medical center and I should um, be able to do that for you, give you an e-medical or the medical history. Okay. So you don't if you don't have any e-medical, if you don't have if it's not been a while that you've done medicals, you need to do all your medicals. Okay. That's another point. Medicals is very important. Do it upfront. So the next one is your resume, also called your CV. It's also important to also attach your resume or your CV to your application. It's not mandatory, but you know it's important also. The, the next one is CSC. CSC is um if you have a business back home that is registered, make sure you show your registered business. It's very important. If your business is legitimate and is registered, make sure you attach it. Okay, it's very important. So another form you'll be getting this one, you'll be getting this form from IRC's website. It's called IMM5707 form, where you'll be filling the names of all your and families or your family members okay so you've been needing that form and you need another form again it's called imm1294 is the study visa application made from outside canada so you also need these two form this two form is also very very important and mind you after all this you have to pay for application fee which is about 200 canadian dollar and pay for biometrics which is about 85 dollars which is a total of 200 and $85, right? So what am I missing in my list? Um, I think I've covered everything I need to cover. So please watch this video if you want to go to Canada as a student. Make sure you watch this video. Don't be ignorant. Information is power. I've dropped this information here. So make good use of this information. So thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.